You've got to be kidding me. Only 2.75 watts of charging speed? Is Apple's MagSafe battery pack a flop? Well, today we have a bunch of tools here. I have a wattage tester, multiple phones, some third-party battery packs. We will be taking a look and finding out just that. In my last video, we looked at the specs that Apple didn't publish on the main product page, which led me to believe that this thing isn't gonna be as nice as it should for the price tag. I have to say that the build quality Quality, looks and feels fantastic. I probably have the most detailed wireless charging pack test video on my channel and none of those really came close to this. So it definitely feels really nice. Now inside the box, not only do we not have a charging brick, we don't even have a charging cable. I do wish they put that in because every other one that I've purchased did come with one. Let's see how well it holds on. I'm gonna attach it to my 12 Pro Max at first. And okay, first off, the magnet is pretty dang powerful. That is really nice. But unfortunately, as far as spinning, just like with Apple's wallet, it spins fairly easily. And then applying a little bit too much pressure, it does pop off. So as far as the connection, it doesn't feel as strong as I thought it might feel. And it's really, do you hear that, Vadim? Yeah. That secondary little click, it's almost like this pad is separate from it. Almost like it's a little MagSafe section there that's moving. That's really, really weird. Now let's see if it's any better with an iPhone 12 that has the glossy back. Um, not really, it doesn't really seem that way. All right, now let's see how it compares to the HyperPower. This thing's about 40 bucks. It was a part of my ultimate test. The HyperPower is fairly slick. Okay, so Apple's is a little bit more powerful as far as the magnets. Slightly more grippy, but not by much. And my favorite one right over here, this thing is $28. Oh my goodness, okay, look at that. <laughs> this one basically has a rubber pad at the bottom and it stays on there super well, barely twists and barely moves. That's crazy that the smaller one is actually better. Now I did buy Anchor's wireless power pack. That's probably the most popular third party option and it's less than half the price of Apple's. So I will be doing a very in-depth comparison between these. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button below if you guys wanna check that out. And that also will help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers before the end of the year. We would greatly appreciate it. Now before we see what shows up on the screen, let's try it out on the mini. As you guys can see, it fits perfectly and as far as grip, still slides around just way too easy for my liking. So footprint size, it's about the same as the HyperPower, actually slightly longer if you guys see that. It is a little bit thinner, but compared to Blue Mini, you guys see this thing is quite a bit smaller footprint size. Now let's check out the thickness. It's actually right about the same thickness as Blue Mini. Um, but compared to the HyperPower, it is quite a bit thinner. Now, as far as comfort in the hand, it feels surprisingly good, and it doesn't feel as slick as I expected. Pretty much the same uh, slickness as just the regular back, and compared to the regular iPhones, it is more slick than that glass glossy back. And now let's test out the charging. Let's attach it as we look at the screen. There we go. We have the little animation and it looks like, is it dead? Yeah, we're not getting any charge. Let's go to our widget over here. This is one of the benefits of getting Apple's version actually shows up. Yeah, it is completely dead. But with that, let's move on to our next test and see how fast this thing can charge. I have my wattage meter here. I'm gonna plug it into Apple's 20 watt power adapter. And let's take a look here. And it looks like it's jumping between 15 to 15.25. I usually go off of the lower amount. So that's pretty decent. You should get a fairly quick charge with this. And I will be talking about that in my full review and how long it takes to charge up both this way and with reverse wireless charging, but our Blue Mini right here will actually accept 16.7 watts, so this actually charges a little bit faster. Now Apple says that you can use this as a MagSafe wireless charging pad, so you don't actually have to buy a separate one, and this is a perfect scenario where it's dead, but I wanna charge my phone, so let's go ahead and connect this and take a look at that. It actually bumped up the wattage to about 16.5, 16.85, so it is actually working as a MagSafe charger, actually slightly higher than what you need. So maybe actually slowly charging the internal battery as well. So yes, it does in fact work as a MagSafe wireless charger, which typically costs you 40 bucks. Now my next question is how much of that wattage 
is actually passing through to our phone. Let's see how efficient Apple's MagSafe option is compared to the alternatives. I'm gonna go ahead and run this test, which will actually test the real world wattage that is hitting our iPhone's battery pack. All right, we have our results and we achieved 9.21 watts that actually hit our iPhone's battery. So that is not the full 15 watts. Of course, there is some performance loss through wireless. So let's go ahead and test out how this compares to actually buying Apple's MagSafe charger and using that instead. And it looks like we do have a difference. Using a standard MagSafe wireless charger, we got 12.66 watts that hit the battery. So that is a difference of roughly 40%. So no, Apple's MagSafe battery pack does not charge your phone as fast even if you're using it as a wireless charging pad. All right guys, take a look at this. I just connected it to the iPhone 12 and in the widgets, it's showing that the MagSafe battery pack is already at half capacity. So this is very interesting. We did cut the cameras, uh, we transferred some of clips, so we, it was more than just a few minutes of charging, but what do you say, Vadim, roughly half hour or so, and it's half charged. So maybe the actual capacity in here is very low, but it's just super efficient. And that's something we're gonna talk about and test in our full review. Now, since it's half charged, the next thing that I wanna test is how fast can this pack charge your phone when you don't have it plugged in? This is the biggest reason I wanted to buy Apple's version over the third-party alternatives. These don't use MagSafe, they just use the alignment magnets. I want a much faster option, but based on the specs, we were disappointed. So let's go ahead and open up our app and give it a test. Now I'm running it on the iPhone 12. After all, I'll also run it on the 12 Pro Max and the 12 Mini to see if we have a difference depending on what phone you own. And it looks like we have 4.18 watts. So yes, it is true that once you have it unplugged from the wall, not using as a wired wireless charger, uh, you do not get MagSafe speeds. It's Apple rated it at five watts in their support page, which is a letdown. In reality, we're getting 4.18, a little bit less that is actually hitting the battery. Now that is still better than the 3.5 of this blue mini, but it is 28 bucks and the actual capacity is likely about the same as Apple's, but we'll be testing that. Um, but this $40 hyperpower, this thing will actually charge at seven watts that hits the battery, so even faster when you're using it as it's intended. Now I'm testing the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We'll see if it can do any better, but what I'm really curious about is the 12 mini. You've gotta be kidding me, only 2.75 watts of charging speed? I don't know what is going on. We just saw 4.18 or so with iPhone 12. I do feel a good amount of heat on the back of the MagSafe battery pack right here, more so than before, so maybe it is tapering down but let's go ahead and take it off. I'll maybe just let it sit for a sec and I'm gonna test it out on the iPhone 12 mini. All right, that is what I'm talking about. 4.96 watts. Now it's still not 15 or 12 and a half like MagSafe should be, but we are getting the full five right now that Apple advertises. So maybe that was because the battery cooled down a little bit and this phone was cool. Um, it's actually getting that full amount, which actually means that they're feeding more than five. They must be feeding at least six or maybe six and a half to be able to achieve this five, but you can add that. Now this phone is actually a little bit lower battery as well. It was about 68. Uh, percent when it started. So maybe there's some tapering also going on. If you're just above 70%, we will find out that in our full review and also how much heat affects it. Because as you guys saw with the 12 Pro Max, it was not doing well at all. And um, that could be because of you know longevity. Apple doesn't want to run it too hot, so it might taper it down. But then if you're doing something like gaming and you have the screen on, there's a potential that your phone can actually drop in battery even though you have it attached if you're doing something like gaming. So we will be looking into that. So let's get back to our original question. Is Apple's MagSafe battery pack a flop? Well, kind of. We did find out some positive things about it, um, such as how fast it charges, at least based on what we saw. 
and that it is thinner and a little bit lighter than I expected, but also some negatives. Like if you're using it as a wireless charging base station, it doesn't give you the full performance and it is capped at that five watts of charging. And of course it is expensive and it potentially could even thermal throttle or slow down to stop it from getting too hot, which in turn will mean that it will last a lot longer than some of these third party options. But at the same time, it's a hundred bucks compared to 40 or compared to 28. Um, now this one that's also rated five watts, it will charge at 3.5, but this one that's rated at 7.5 charges at seven and it has a larger capacity as well. So the last thing that we have to answer is how much of your iPhone can this thing actually charge and how fast can it do it? So that will be the final answer. Before that, I'm gonna have to spend a couple days of doing some detailed test and then give you guys my full review and along with that you know this gives you reliable cells um, you know it's gonna last a long time it's gonna work but of course we have anchors that we will be doing a head-to-head -head comparison against and you know you can trust anchor as well so make sure you guys click that circle above to subscribe if you guys want to see that video and check out the other ones that I've done right over here this is max and I'll see you in the next video